In this lesson, we'll be graphing from factored form. Now, in the previous lesson, we graphed from vertex form. And I will argue it's easy to graph from vertex form, but if we give it to you in factor form, uh, then you need to, you know, uh, go with what we give you. So, uh, before we graph from factor form, we actually want to just look at something we learned from grade 9, okay, which is finding x-intercepts. In grade 9, when you were asked to find the x-intercepts of a linear relation, what did you do? So quickly, we let y equal 0. In fact, that was one of the first things I mentioned in, in this course, because we were reviewing how to graph a line, we're talking about linear systems. But anyways, to find the x-intercept, you let y equal 0. And that makes sense, right? That makes perfect sense. Because if I'm on the x-axis, guess what? The y-coordinate must be equal to 0, right? It makes perfect sense to let y equal 0. You're not going to let y equals 1 to find an x-intercept. That'd be insane, right? You want to let y equal 0. You're on the x-axis. Okay, so why is it important? Because we actually want to do the same thing. We want to find the x-intercepts um, from factored form, okay? Or in general, we want to find the x-intercepts of, of the quadratic relation period. But like I said, we're going to focus on factor form here because uh, we want to know what factor form gives us. So y equals a times x minus r x minus. This is factor form, just to refresh your memory, okay? We spent a lot of time on vertex form already, but let's spend a bit of time factored form. Okay, so here's your equation. Here are your x-intercepts. Okay, here are your equations. Here are your x-intercepts. So I really want you to take a look at the factors and take a look at the x-intercepts. Is there a connection here between the x-intercepts and the factors? Hmm, okay. So you can pause the video, but I'm just gonna move on. You know what, let's take a look at the first equation. It seems like, you know, the, the numbers are pretty much the same, but the signs are switched. So it makes sense because for the first equation, you let y equal zero. Okay, you let y equal zero, and what do you have? x plus 1, x minus 4, okay? And this is something that we want to review from elementary school as well. This is called the zero product property, okay? You want to know when the right side is equal to zero. Well, that's actually very easy because the right side is expressed in terms of a product of two factors. The two factors are x plus 1 and x minus 4. Well, when is the product equal to zero. Well, the product is equal to zero when either of these factors are equal to zero. That's called the zero product property. If either of these factors equal to zero, then the product is zero. So that's why we say x plus one is equal to zero or x minus four is equal to zero. We set the factors equal to zero. One of the factors equal to zero because if they are zero, the product is zero. The product is zero. So x is equal to negative 1, x is equal to 4. Oh, so we solve this equation. Just like in grade 9, you solve that equation to find the x-intercepts. So using the zero product property, I know exactly when the right side is 0. When x is negative 1 and when x is equal to 4. Oh, that's why, yes. So that makes sense that the x-intercepts are negative 1 and 4. Is those? That's a solution to the equation when y equals 0. Beautiful. So, you know what? Let's summarize that. Let y, um, okay, actually we want to summarize the relationship. So, the x-intercepts can be found by letting the factors equal zero and we might want to add because of the zero product property number no, because of the zero product property it makes sense that you want to let the factors equal to zero because the product will be zero all right so when you are more comfortable then you can actually just look at the factor and say, okay, yep, negative two, six. But in the beginning, we're going to uh, uh, do the math, okay? 
a lot of students they just look at the factor and then they just um, switch the sign but they don't understand why they're switching the sign so you're switching the sign because that's the value uh, that will make it equal zero you're looking for the opposite so anyways I'll just do the math so let y equal zero x plus two equals zero zero product property so negative two or six so therefore x intercepts are negative two and six there are two of them what about this one Ooh, 3x minus 4 2x plus 1 now once like I said once you become more comfortable you can extract the x-intercepts right away without doing all this math but in the beginning uh, just give yourself practice so set the first factor to zero set the factor second factor goes zero. when either of these are zero then the product is, is zero so this would be x is four thirds x is negative one half okay therefore x intercepts are four, let's do negative half and four thirds you have two x intercepts negative half and four thirds all right what about this guy let's say zero product property wait a minute i can't apply the zero product property because this is hot in factored form it's not something times something it's something minus something minus something i can't tell you when it's equal to zero okay so this is not in factored form uh, so i don't know what the factors are so i cannot apply the zero product property so if i let y equal zero your guess is as good as mine so what you need to do is learn how to factor this okay, how to change this in the factored form to standard to factored form and that's the big focus in the next chapter okay so we're going to just leave this and maybe we can come back to it one day um, but as of now you don't have the, the ability to solve for the x-intercepts okay so now we know what factored form is good for factored form gives us the zeros okay now I haven't used that word and uh, but these values here four thirds and negative one half those are the zeros of the quadratic relation why are they called the zeros because you solve for them algebraically when the equation was when you let y equal zero those were the solutions so whatever the solutions to the equation are when y equal, when you let y equal zero those are called the zeros of the quadratic relation now what you must be wondering what, what's the difference between zeros and x-intercepts that's a great question zeros are what you find algebraically when you solve the equation x-intercepts are, are what you see a graph of a parabola i know it's a very minute difference but um there is there is a difference because uh later on when you learn uh, more i don't say complicated stuff but but a higher end stuff the there is a difference between rows and x-intercepts but from a grade 10 perspective i can argue yeah they're they're very they're pretty you can interchange them and get away with it but uh, we really want to use the correct wording okay the factor form of the quadratic equation gives us the zeros which correspond to the x-intercepts of the problem that's why students get confused between zeros and x-intercepts because they they're really the same number all the time so you feel like you can just switch swap them around uh, okay unfortunately having the x-intercepts is not enough to give ourselves the complete graph we also need the what's the most important point the vertex right the vertex is key if i can plot that vertex i'll be home free okay to find the vertex we make use of the fact that the problem is symmetrical right it's always symmetric we can find the x corner of the vert by hmm how do you find the middle we learned that when we did the midpoint uh, formula we find that halfway between average averaging the zeros once we have the x coordinate we use the equation to find the y coordinate of the vertex okay so 
if uh, you pause the video and really try to read these two paragraphs uh, because that is a lot of great, great information. Um, so take your time, read it over, but we'll do the math uh, to, to graph this one. Okay, so the zeros, what are the zeros? So you can set each factor equal to zero and solve for it, but you know what? I feel pretty confident that you can do this. The zeros are negative three, sorry, negative one and positive three, okay? It, these are the values of x which make y equal zero. That's why they're called zeros. Now, they, graph, they correspond to the x-intercepts of the graph. So negative one, three, okay? But we really want the vertex. So, I know the x corner vertex is halfway, or the vertex is going to be on the axis symmetry, which is halfway between uh, these two x intercepts. Okay, so you average the two zeros. So negative 1 plus 3 is 2. So negative 1 plus 3 is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So that's the x corner vertex. And what's a y corner vertex? The y corner of the vertex. It's going to just sub it in the equation, right? If I know what x is, I can solve for y. Now, this is a special y coordinate, but a y coordinate nonetheless. Follow bed mass, negative 2 times 2, negative 4. Bam! Therefore, vertex is 1, negative 4. Okay, 1, negative 4. So let's plot that. 1, negative 4. Now take a look at that. Does that look right? Yeah, absolutely. Right? It's halfway in between. Beautiful. Now we also want to um, we also want to uh, grab two more points here because, like we said earlier, three points is not really sufficient when it comes to giving yourself a nice um, a nice parabola. So what you can also do is give yourself the y-intercept which is actually right next to my vertex. Or you can just look at this equation and expand this, um, which you will, we're gonna talk about expanding this in the next chapter. Um, but you know what, let's just find the wires up. I think that that will be sufficient. If you solve for the y intercept, uh, let x equal zero, negative one plus three, is negative three. Now I knew that. I knew it was negative three before I even did the math. How did I know that? Because I knew the step pattern was going to be um, was going to be one three five. Because the if I this is getting a little too much, but I know the a value. The a value is controlled by the coefficient of x and the number that's been factored out. The number that's been factored out is 1, and the coefficient of x is 1 and 1. So 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. So the a value is 1. And if the a value is 1, the step pattern is 1, 3, 5. Beautiful. Okay, let's label that. y equals x minus 3, x plus 1. Okay, like for this one, I know the step pattern here will not be 1, 3, 5 because the a value is 4. Four, right? There's a two times one times two. So the step pattern will be uh, instead of one, three, five, it'll be four, twelve, twenty. Okay. But anyways, let's get back to um, finding the vertex. So the zeros will be two from this factor here. What makes x minus two zero? If x were to be zero, well, two x plus one, negative one half. If that was too much for you. Let 2x plus 1 equal 0, and then you'll see that negative half makes that factor equal 0. So that, the negative 1 half is a 0 of the quadratic relation. Now let's find the x corner vertex by averaging, right? Just like what we did in the midpoint formula, halfway. So before I do that though, I want to plot these beautiful points. So 2 plus negative 1 half, that's negative 3, sorry, that's 1 and a half. 1 and a half is 3 over 2, 3 quarters. Beautiful. What about the y corner vertex? Hmm. 
All right, let me check on my calculator. I won't make a careless mistake here. Negative 6.25. Okay, so let's plot that. Ooh, 0 0.75. Negative 6.25. Ooh. Okay, about there. <laughs> about there. So you know what? Let's find the y-intercept. And we'll just use the symmetry. It's 0 0.75 or 0 0.75 over. Ooh, this one's tricky. So you know what? Y-intercept. Let x equal 0 like last time. Follow the math, this will be negative 4. Right? Let's see. This is negative 4, negative 4 times 1, negative 4. Okay. And this is 0.75 to the left, so 0.75 to the right would be right about here. Right? You have to go. The parabola is just really nice to sketch based on the symmetry. If you have the left half, you can really do the right half. All right, there we go. So in this lesson, we learn what the factor form gives us. Okay, that was key because we, we've been talking about the vertex form for quite a while. The vertex form is great. But you know what? The factor form is not useless. The factor form gives us the zeros. The factor form can technically, it doesn't give you the vertex, but you can find the vertex pretty easily from the factored form, okay? Uh, and with that knowledge, you will be able to graph from factor form.